I think Pavel's the most exciting one-on-one -on -one player in the world. I like to call him Houdini because he's, uh, he's almost invisible. He brings you out of your chair every time potentially he touches the puck. You want him on the ice when it comes? The spotlight shines on Pavel Datsuk, next on FSN Detroit. Since his arrival from Russia, Pavel Datsuk has risen to become one of the superstar forwards in the NHL. His ability to shoot, his determination, his ability to make plays, his knowledge of the game, and his mesmerizing stick handling leaves many speechless. But few know much about the quiet Red Wing, except for what they see on the ice. This time in the spotlight, Pavel Datsuk. Here's a lead feed, Datsuk in all alone, SCORES! What a beautiful play! Oh, that's a Datsuk oh, and Deke right there, and it's 3-0. He can go in any situation, power play, penalty killing, uh, even strength. He's that dangerous at any moment and very deceptively quick. Great game, here's a break, great take by Datsuk. He's a, he's a superstar player. He's 28 years, 29 years of age. He's a guy that we're going to, you know, we really think that, 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 that Pav and, and Henrik Zetterberg are two players that we're going to build around up front. You know, they're really going to be the face of the franchise. And uh, it was important to, to, to lock up uh, Pav long term. A potential career-long stay for Pavel Datsuk with the legendary Detroit Red Wings will make the road forward that much clearer. But as John Keating found out in Pavel's first extended interview completely in English, his start here was not an easy one for him. How hard was it for you to come to the United States with basically no knowledge of English? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, for me it's hard. Uh, I learned a little bit French in my school and um, it's not help. I don't know French now, <laughs> and uh, now I feel it a little bit more comfortable myself. It's uh, well, I speak English, understand. I can explain what I want, not everything, but better. How far has your English improved over the last few years? What is coming into in a team? It's uh, I know I have English. I have Russian player there who helped me every time, and. Uh, uh, usually use it to English. Now, and, uh, two or three years later, it's everybody gone, and I'm uh, still lucky room. I want to speak, but no Russian guys. Only it's a massage massagist guy, Sergey, and uh, it's a little bit hard time for me. And uh, I start to a little bit learn. Everybody try to help me talk, and now now I can a little bit step up a little bit. I uh, just speak English not well. But I almost everything is the stand almost. You know, it was it was it's probably it was cut, it was a couple of years before he could really communicate to me other other than with the Russian speaking players in our in our organization. You know, I think he he's doing he's doing good. You know, his, his English uh, you know improved when when uh, when he is the only Russian here because he has to has to speak uh, uh, English and uh, you know it, it's it's both good and bad. But you know he he, he he's done really well. He's a quiet guy, and he lets people believe that he doesn't understand or doesn't speak. That's so far from the truth. He's a very bright young man, but he's very witty. He's really got a real good sense of humor, and that people didn't get to see that side of him because he's not able to express it. People don't really realize how funny Pavel Datsuk is, and he probably understands the language uh, better than he lets on. But you can say something to Pavel, and he will come back with a one-liner. They say Thomas Holmstrom's the funniest guy in that room. Pavel's pretty close, and, and he gets it. Very amusing guy. It's tough sometimes to understand him, but you know it's it, it's funny stuff that he you know he he, he does, and, and, and he just makes everybody around him feel comfortable. I think. Born in 1978 in Severodvinsk in the former Soviet Union, now Ekaterinburg, Russia. Pavel Datsuk knew little of the NHL, but what he did know made a big impression. I don't know a lot about NHL. Where I see a couple games, it's my dream. I want to be there. I want to try. It's uh, my goal to go through, and I'm there. So your dream was to make it to the NHL. How much did you know about the Red Wings because they had the Russian Five? Russian Five play there. It's uh, Red Wings is popular in uh, not my town. This whole. Russia kind of popular. Everybody looking to Red Wings 
and uh, where he went to Stanley Cup. Everybody talk about this one and uh, talk about how this good Detroit Red Wings. And uh, I'm just still looking too. I don't know, I just been a huge team, good organization like that. You were passed over in a couple of drafts, and then the Red Wings drafted you, but 171st. Um, what was your reaction when you learned that the Red Wings had drafted you, and where they drafted it's, uh, you? It's uh, kind of a little bit funny because where I, I know it's uh, from one guy in the locker room. He said, you're not drafting in the NHL pick. I just, yeah, I just keep going joking about me. And uh, he said, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a joke, it's uh, true. And uh, he showed me newspaper. And uh, now I just kind of surprised, wow, I'm in a draft now. <laughs> when Pavel uh, was drafted, we were able to bring him over in the summer development camp. We were able to work with him and evaluate him. Uh, you know, ten years earlier with the Russians, we, uh, we couldn't get near him, we couldn't talk to them. We, we, we had to, to talk to them in the middle of the night to try to get them to, uh, to defect. Uh, it's a tough, tough team to get a uh, spot in the lineup. And then I saw him on the ice, uh, and I thought like, that that kid can be very, very helpful, very useful for the team like Detroit, and uh, he did that. Twenty-one-year-old Pavel Datsuk had arrived in Detroit without any ability to speak the language. But the Red Wings had in their fold a Russian superstar, Igor Larionov, aptly nicknamed the Professor, who would help Pavel make his transition to so much that was new in his life. He was quite uh, very uh, uh, shy and modest guy. So, and uh, to me, you know, it was uh, uh, for kind of like my task was to help him to. Uh, uh, to get it, uh, adjusted to the uh, new life and the new team and the, especially the new game because you know that's the uh, toughest adjustment you know you have to make an, an uh, impression on the coaches and on the, and the teammates. Uh, that was a special relationship obviously with the, with the language thing. What a great guy for Pavel to have as a mentor. You could not ask for a better guy uh, than Igor Larionov to mentor a young player like that just to get him understand how it all works. And for him, uh, you know, coming to, once again, coming to North America, and there had like, no language and uh, he didn't know anybody, so, and it's not easy, so, and, uh, and I'm, my goal was to try to tell him to just relax and do, you, uh, do your best and uh, play your hockey and don't, uh, don't try to do too much. But it wasn't just Igor who helped Pavel's transition to the wings. Veteran Brett Hull was crucial in helping him develop an NHL style. Hull, Datsuk, and Boy Devereaux would form the infamous two kids and an old goat line in the 01-02 Cup season. You know, Brett Hull was so important for us because uh, he could score goals. You know, they all brought different dimensions. Boy Devereaux brought incredible speed um, and did a lot of the work back checking. Uh, Pavel was the playmaker. You know, Boyd was a lot of the legs, Pavel was the brains, and Brett was the finisher. It was almost like a match made in heaven, a guy who could really handle the puck and, and really take the defender's, uh, uh, you know, uh, concentration away and make them focus on him. And I do what I did best and get open. And he was uh, uh, not only a great stick handler, but he could really see the ice and pass the puck uh, wonderfully. I want to ask you about Brett Hull. How much did he impact your career? Because he loved you. I mean, he was your biggest fan in trying to get your name out to other people around the world of hockey. I learned from him a lot. He chef unbelievable to play. He just find a spot where uh, easy to pass him. And uh, he, every time he opened, he opened and I find a good spot for shoot. And uh, he have helped me in the locker room. He just told me, no, don't worry, everything's fine with score, don't worry. You know, I remember we'd come to the bench and, and uh, I would look like I'm mad and, and Pavel would always look at me and go, but I'm mad? And that was a lot of his first year of what he would say and I go, no, I'm not mad. Brett's gregarious and I think maybe it brought Pavel out of the shell a little bit and you play with a veteran like Brett Hall who finds open ice, that probably helped Pavel's game too. I, I think they had a lot of fun together that year. Again, that's who get on goal!
So that, that line played a huge uh, integral part for us in winning the cup and, and we had a lot of big names and all that and Pav just being a rookie at the time got overlooked but just that team won because we had depth and, uh, and balanced scoring and, and he was the, you know, the center of the pivot on that line. To be able to play with a guy like that in my, you know, the waning years of my career really made it quite exciting for me. I coached against him when I was in Anaheim and I just thought he had the puck on a string. I, I never knew he was uh, going to be as good a two-way player as he is. Carries on, drops back to Stahl, in for Smith. Good back check by Datsu. As only in a dream, Pavel Datsuk would go on to be part of a 2002 Stanley Cup champion Red Wings in just his rookie season. He would also skate with his bronze medal Russian national team in the Winter Olympics that same year. With his experience growing, so would his list of NHL moments. November 12th of 2003, mm -hmm. the Red Wings are in Dallas. Do you remember that goal against Marty Turco? Uh, yeah. What do you remember from that night? So what I remember, it's um, score, I think 4-2, it's uh, nothing pressure. It's it's the end of game. Brett passed me, and uh, I think it's a kind of almost first time I go to one and one. It's uh, almost from blue line. I've been waiting this to almost two years to do this one. So you had that move. You knew what you were going to do yeah, once you got yeah, the chance. Uh, and uh, why I do it? It's uh, no pressure too. It's uh, four two. It's no score. It's no score. You score. You score. But it was a it was a thing of beauty. And Brett Hall a perfect feed. Pavel Datsuk in the clear all alone. Oh, what a goal! Oh, put that in your highlight reel, Bank. Pavel Datsuk, his second of the night. Did he pull that string? Teammates see in the practice too. Kind of. He says it's a nice goal. It's uh, nice to be on TV. I like to call him Houdini because he's, uh, he's almost invisible sometimes, uh, not by his absence, but by the way he darts and weaves and, and uh, most players in the game today just can't stay with him. But even with all of his skill, the stoppage of the 2004-2005 season would put Pavel's professional future in critical doubt. The lockout happens, mm -hmm. you go back home, but you're without an NHL contract, right? Mm -hmm. And you have two Russian Super League teams that want to sign you. Yeah. What was that summer like for you? I don't have contract. It's a hard summer and uh, where it's a training camp start, I don't have contract with an, uh, another team. And uh, I try to uh, sign with Red Wings. Obviously being a Russian player and a Russian star player, he had a lot of Russian teams after him. And um, we, we had a difference of opinion of what Pavel's worth was in the National Hockey League. Um, and ultimately led to where Gary Greenston and, and Pavel uh, signed a contract with a Russian club. Because it's a Russian season already start. And uh, what's happened if Red Wings not signed me, I lost one year. It's, uh, be, it's a huge decision for me. Because uh, if I'm not signed Red Wings, I'm lost one year. Uh, nobody knows what's happened after this year and uh, I just put kind of my head it's uh, you needed to play more practice and uh, maybe come into next year to help team. But he really wanted to be a Red Wing and, and, and after he'd signed the contract within 24, 48 hours, you know, I had moved, they had moved, we'd come to a number and now he dis determined that he didn't want to play in Russia. He wanted to come back and play in Detroit. I'm happy it's, it's happened. I'm coming back. It's, uh, maybe I'm coming a little bit late. I missed training camp, but I'm coming and uh, my kids this year signed to a two-year deal. Having secured a two-year deal with the Wings, Pavel Datsuk would once again set focus on making his mark in the NHL. He's good in the face-off circle, he's good defensively, he's good on the power play, he's good on the penalty kill. Uh, you want him on the ice when it counts. Here comes Datsu, dropping back. Shanahan, Datsu, scores! What a beautiful play! It's 3-1! to 
Pavel Datsuk had almost walked away from the NHL during the 2004-2005 work stoppage, but his growing love for the Red Wings and the NHL soon gave him second thoughts. And that would bring him back with a new two-year contract extension. One hockey person who had seen you play as a kid, small kid, said, what he does with his hands, not normal. When did you know that your hands, your stick work, was special? Every player have huge sight. Mine maybe it's a good part. I have good handle and uh, somebody, but I have good shot. And uh, you need to use it. I try to use it. My huge. Your upside. Were, yeah. were you always that good, though? Were you always uh, able to stick handle around other players when you were a kid? Maybe because I'm not strong. It's a pack too heavy. I try to moving this way. But you weren't big. Yeah. At some point, you sort of you sort of grew into your body a little bit. You're still not a big man, yeah. but yeah. but you you sort of sprouted a little bit, right? When I come first time in training camp, he say you will like you, but you need more physical. And now when I come back to, I'm use it two years to my physical shape. Conditioning though is a big part of who you are. Were you always? that determined to be well conditioned or was that something you learned hanging around the Red Wings? It's a different for me. We have in, a, in a Russia every before our season we start to two months before and uh, you do practice, lots of practice, practice before season start. Now there it's uh, only three weeks before you need to be in a keep it your shape ready. It's, uh, it's a lot to learn. So year-round, you really have to stay in hockey shape, yeah, basically, yeah. right? I needed to do it myself to work out and everything. What are your summers like, or what have they been like since you've become a Red Wing? When the summer started, I more use it to tennis now and the soccer. It's more fun and the more keep it shape. And uh, soccer. Go to, yeah, soccer and tennis, big tennis. And, uh, I not forget going to the gym too. I know it's not fun going in the summertime where there's sun everywhere, but you need to go, you need to keep it shape. But your off seasons are back home in Ekaterinburg. Uh, yeah, I go home to still every year, almost two months. Yeah. Are you the best tennis player on this Red Wings team? Uh, we don't have chance to play with <laughs> each other. Everybody like golf. But they want you to play golf, right? So they can uh, take some of your money. We are not. I like golf now. I play this summer. I have, I think it's a best golf summer because I usually I play two times. It's a one charity, one in Traverse City. Sure. And uh, this year I play almost seven, eight times, nine maybe. How'd you do? Uh, Sometimes not bad. Sometimes, like usual, lost ball, but it's fine. I like golf now. This golf game is uh, different. <laughs> Uh, to be nice and uh, actually this training camp I saw he was out there by himself and practicing a lot and, and so it's uh, but I saw a few swings I don't know it doesn't it looks uh, yeah different the fans in Detroit and uh, fans of the uh, Detroit Red Wings and around the country so we'll be happy and we'll go, they're going to see more of Pavel Dazio The 06-07 season coming to a close. The Red Wings knew Pavel Datsuk's contract was set to expire. We knew he was going to be an unrestricted free agent July 1st, 2007. We wanted to lock him up long term. And we went through another, obviously, it took us four, five, six months of negotiation to come to agree to the contract that we did. There was a day when you looked like you had a secret, when your contract extension was going to get done. And you didn't tell everybody right away, but you knew that this was done, that long-term deal, seven-year contract with the Red Wings. Mm -hmm. Take me back there. What was, what was that like for you to know that your future was set? Uh, lots of uh, kind of adrenaline and uh, exciting and be there with good organization, with nice people around and be happy. But it's a little bit me slow down because it's a playoff coming. I start to forget about contract. I just keep in mind the playoff because everybody talk about playoff. You need to be good in the playoff. And uh, 
it's kind of good news and uh, he just put in uh, your pocket behind sure yeah and uh, I just look into playoff exciting time by 2007 having grown into a team leader Pavel would now don the A I think that uh, by putting an A on his jersey it, it, it gives him added responsibility in the locker room and makes him we want him to understand Mike wanted him to understand how important he is to this franchise and the success of this franchise on and off the ice. When you, you pay a guy a lot of money, it's like getting married. You're married to him, and they're not going away. And so those decisions are huge decisions for the organization. We were fortunate that we were given a good timeline. Uh, you know, seeing him develop, seeing how hard he worked on and off the ice, seeing how much he loves hockey. To me, you can't make those commitments to people that aren't great people. Uh, because if they happen to decide to retire on you, and that means still come to the rink and still play, but not play hard, uh, they'll kill your franchise. Well, we don't have any worry with Bob or Hank or Nick or guys like that or Rafalski for that matter and the commitment we made them because of the type of people there. Is it important for you, in a, in a world where players change teams, for you to be a Red Wing, a career-long Red Wing like Steve Eiserman? Yeah, it's big. What are you looking forward to? I want to be start and finish one team. It's be nice, unbelievable, and uh, huge for me. I do, do, do everything to be there. You know, that's kind of what you want as a player. You want to have that, uh, you know, feel calm and, and be secure where you are. And, and I think, you know, Pav has that now. The fans in Detroit and uh, fans of the uh, Detroit Red Wings and around the country, so we'll be happy. And they're going to see more of Pavel Datsyuk and that team to be successful and to be uh, to keep it legacy, you know, uh, and the Detroit and the, uh, uh, the kind of style of hockey. He's surrounded with great players here in Detroit, and I think that's what's so important. And for a guy like Pavel Datsyuk, he knows his organization is committed to winning. And when you do that and you sign the type of extension that he did, that's faith in the organization. The organization showing faith in him. Caps it back for Datsuk. Look at that. Play around leg walk. Datsuk. On Zidlicki. Scores! Oh, was that magic? He is now playing the way I expected he could for the last couple of years. He's put it all together. He's a lot stronger than he was a few years ago. Stronger on his skates. Uh, he can take some checks and not be uh, knocked down and and not getting up, he's right back into the play. Um, he brings you out of your chair every time potentially he touches the puck. You have a highlight real play or a goal. I think Pavel's the most exciting one-on-one -on -one player in the world. I remember on opening night, uh, Dave Haxtall, the head coach of the University of North Dakota, came to the game and sat in my box for the, in the game we played, uh, the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. When the game was over, Dave and I walked down to uh, the locker room, and Dave, first thing that Dave told me was, um, it was his first chance to see the Detroit Red Wings live, and he said, Pavel Datsuk is worth the price of admission all by himself. Sometimes when you're, you're not a media darling and you don't spend all your time talking to him, you don't get the credit you deserve, all you gotta do is watch. It's pretty straightforward.